Have you ever been traveling abroad? Or maybe you're not in the US now, but want to stream services like Netflix, Hulu, Disney Plus to your devices? Well, you can. I know people say you can do this with a VPN, but that's partially true. They didn't give you all the details. What you really have to do is get a VPN with your own IP address. I've used services like Private Internet Access and some other ones that were recommended because yeah, you do need a VPN for certain things. It's more secure, especially if you're on public Wi-Fi. You should absolutely be using a VPN just to hide your information. Otherwise, people can steal your data. That's a fact. And in certain countries, if you don't use a VPN, you won't have access to a lot of different websites. Everyone knows China bans Facebook, Google, Reddit. Indonesia bans Reddit too. I thought that was surprising. And then many very religious countries will ban adult sites like Indonesia and Thailand. I'm just gonna throw that out there. You should probably know that. There's a lot of banned sites that you can't access without a VPN. VPNs can also be very limited as far as the bandwidth they provide you. And if you're streaming anything, you're gonna need at least a decent internet speed. So the stream continues flawlessly. That's why you need a VPN that gives you your own IP address. And you can do that with TorGuard. This isn't a commercial for TorGuard. I've just been wondering how to do this for a long time and I finally figured it out, so I'm sharing it. The TorGuard VPN service comes in a variety of pricing. If you're going month to month, it's gonna be expensive. It's gonna be $20 a month. If you're paying annually, it's gonna be $120 a month. You have to price it out to your needs. If you're only gonna be out of town for like a month, it makes sense to get the monthly package. If you're living abroad, it absolutely makes sense to buy the annual. I actually did have trouble setting up the tour guard service. I pretty much bought the service, installed it, set up my VPN and hit go. I was able to use all the VPNs provided by TorGuard, but my very specific streaming IP address was not set up. So I contacted support. They helped me through it and it was really easy. We were emailing back and forth within minutes. So it took 10 minutes to set up the service. They gave me my IP address and then I was able to access Hulu, Disney and Netflix. I know there's torrents and other streaming sites out there but they're all sketchy, they have inconsistent speeds, and they're very likely to give you a virus. So for myself, I really wanted to stream this on my Roku so I can just sit back on my couch and stream anything. Of course, you can stream things on your computer, set it up that way, but it's not as enjoyable. That's why I got the GL iNet mini router. There's a lot of routers that have a VPN option available, but I'm cheap and I was looking for the cheapest one. Luckily, the cheapest one is very affordable and is travel sized in the box. It comes with the GL iNet router, which is pretty small, as you can see compared to a credit card or passport, it is very compact. Also in the box is your instructions, ethernet cable, and micro USB cable for power. Setting it up is pretty easy. You don't have to replace your current router if you don't have to. You can just run two routers. So what I did was I had my main router and then I connected my mini router to it. So then I have two access points at home where if I log into my regular router, I have my full speed of my home network, which is 60 megabits per second. And then when I use the mini router, which is set up to the open VPN network, I get it. I get speeds of six megabits per second, which is its full speed on the network. That's not a limitation of the mini router. It's just what TorGuard provides me. TorGuard provides me up to six megabits per second of internet speeds on a US IP address, which if you're streaming, it's just enough for HD content. It has more features. If you happen to be traveling in a hotel, you know that hotels make you log in with your last name and room number. They also sometimes limit you with the amount of devices you can log into their network. This is when the travel router gets really good. You can connect the mini router through the ethernet cable available in your hotel room. That way you'll get the strongest speeds possible. Otherwise you can use the Wi-Fi repeater option and it's pretty easy. You just set up the router, go to the router settings page, 
log into the hotel network, and then you're done. Once you're logged into the hotel network, all your settings for your router should be in place, and then you just log into the router. So basically, you have your hotel Wi-Fi connection, which feeds into your mini router connection, which then can feed into all your home devices, meaning your laptop, phone, Roku stick. And if you've ever wondered how to stream a Roku to your hotel, this is how you do it. This is how you can avoid those extremely high fees for hotel movies and any of their paid on-demand streaming services. I happened to be in the intercontinental Singapore, they were charging $15 for the most recent Spider-Man movie, and that was on Netflix for free already. If you were already paying for Netflix, it was cheaper to sign up for Netflix, watch that movie, than pay for it at the Intercontinental in Singapore. Well, technical data, the repeater is pretty fast. Since my home internet is at 60 megabits per second, if I connect through my mini router, which is already connected through my main router, I get speeds about 54 to 56 megabits per second, and that's on a wired connection. If I use the Wi-Fi repeater mode, I get pretty close to similar speeds. So overall, the mini router works very well. The only thing I can really criticize it on is that the setup takes a while. Loading a page sometimes takes like 30 seconds, but luckily the whole setup process takes about 10 minutes with mostly waiting. It's not that bad considering that you only have to do it once or if you're moving around a lot, rarely. So overall, I recommend it. It's the cheapest option for any of the routers that have open VPN services at about 20 bucks. I don't do a lot of these technical reviews. This is mostly a travel stuff. This is mostly a travel blog, lifestyle, you know, cheapo blog. But I've always wondered how to do this. So you can too. All right, I should have stopped there.